Hi everyone. I hope you had a great week last week. This week we are going to look at lessons 61 through 64. So let's get started. This week you're going to need your lessons manual, the student worksheets book, the math card games manual and the game cards, the abacus, the place value cards, and your dry erase board. This week, your child is going to be learning multi-digit multiplication. Now, if your child is struggling with, mul with basic multiplication math facts, these lessons may be difficult. And if that's the case, you may want to consider taking a few days off, maybe a week off of regular lessons, and then spending that time playing math card games specifically to get those math facts down a little bit better. Now, the average learner should have a fairly decent grasp on their multiplication math facts by now. Um, if you have a struggling learner, your child is going to be working on them and continue to, wait, continue to work on them throughout the year. And that's okay. Perfect. Just keep plugging away at it. It still might be a good idea still to take some time off and just to simply play card games to get better at those math facts before you plug away through on these lessons. Then, um, after your child works on those uh, math facts, go back to these lessons. Now you may even want to split up some of these lessons into a couple of days, especially if your struggling learner um, gets overwhelmed easy, um, just to do half of a lesson a day. Remember, it is not a race to complete the level, but it is a process to help your child learn and to learn to their best abilities. So don't push through these lessons because I've got to get these done by such and such a date. Instead, take a look at where your child is and then teach to their speed of learning. All right, so let's turn to lesson 61. Take a look at the warm up section. Here, your child is going to review multi-digit subtraction problems. Now, if your child struggles with these, you may want to play a couple extra math card games, subtraction math card games to review those basic math, subtraction math facts. Also, make sure that these problems, this warm-up section, doesn't take any longer than five to seven minutes to complete. If you find your child is taking longer, then stop them around five minutes um, and then move on into the lesson and then have them finish up those warm-up questions after the lesson is over. That way you're preventing some mental exhaustion and they're able to learn the new material in the lesson. Take a look at the section called Multiplying with Tens. Here your child is going to use side two of the abacus. If you need to, remind your child that each bead in the two ones column is equal to one, uh, the quantity of one. Each bead in the tens column is worth 10, um, 10 beads. Each bead in the hundreds column is 100, and each bead in the thousands column is 1,000. Now, in this section, you are going to use side two of the abacus to multiply the problem 40 times three. Now, you can take a look at the pictures in the middle of that first page of the lesson so you can see how to use the abacus for this particular problem. Then at the bottom of that page, you're going to have your child multiply 400 times three, and again, using the side two of the abacus. And again, those pictures, the pictures of how the abacus is supposed to look like is going to be at the bottom of that first page of the lesson. Then at the top of the second page of the lesson, your child is going to multiply 4,000 times three. Now, if your child has not yet seen the pattern of how this works, you might want to write out these problems and their answers so they can kind of start seeing that pattern. Now, that might look something like this. So you start by saying, what is four times three? And the answer is 12. And you're going to write that equation on the whiteboard. Then you're going to say, okay, so what was 40 times three? Well, that equaled 120. And what is 400 times three? Well, that equals 1,200. Then you're going to start asking some questions. You're going to ask them, what is common about these problems and what is different about these problems and their answers? Then you're going to come up and you're going to say, so what would then 4,000 times three is based on the pattern that they have discovered up to this point. Now in the middle of the second page, you're going to do the exact same thing with 20 times 10 and then 200 times 10. And again, 
um, have your child use the abacus to help them find that pattern, see that pattern. Once you've completed all of these activities, you're going to give your child worksheet 44. Now there are quite a few problems on this worksheet. However, if your child understands that pattern, this worksheet is actually going to be quite easy or at least not overly taxing for your child. If, however, your child struggles with this worksheet, you may want to work with your child a little bit more to help them see the pattern and how that works. The math card game suggested for this lesson is some building, which is A70. Um, it was played last week, or it was suggested to be played last week. You may also want to add a multiplication math card game if your child needs more work on their multiplication math facts. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 62. At the time of recording of this particular overview, um, there was a new error discovered on this lesson. So if your lesson manual was printed in 2020 or earlier, I, there's going to be a correction to be made and I will discuss it later on in this overview. Now your child is going to work through three more multi-digit subtraction problems um, in the warm-up section. Again, if your child struggles with these, you might want to consider adding some subtraction math card games to refresh those math facts. And then again, um, your child shouldn't be spending any more than five to seven minutes on those. If they're taking longer than that, then you're going to want to stop them around five minutes or maybe six minutes um, and then work through the lesson. That way their mind is not exhausted prior to starting the lesson. And then after the lesson is completed, then you can finish those problems um, at the end of the day. The activities in this lesson will help your child review the multiplying of 10 with another number. And it's going to use a couple of proofs um, to prove this process and how it works. Now this process is not just an algorithm to be memorized, but it has math and proof behind it. So I'm going to take a look at the section called multiplying by 10. In this section, your child is going to use the distributive property to help understand how multiplying by 10 will annex, that's a term for this week, annex a zero at the end of the number. So let me show you how that works. So under the section multiplying by 10, we are given the problem 16 times 10. Now we know that 16 is the same as 10 plus 6, right? So that's what we're going to use. We're going to use 10 plus 6 in parentheses, that amount times 10. From there, we are going to apply the distributive property. Now, if you don't recall what the distributive property is, we covered that in lesson 42. And basically what it said was if we're multiplying something outside the parentheses, that something is going to be multiplied to each of those digits inside the multiplication or inside the parentheses. So here we have the 10 times 10. So it would be this 10 here times this 10 here plus this 10 times 6. So if we multiply that out, that is 10 times 10 equals 100. 10 times 6 equals 60. So 100 plus 60 equals 160. Take a look at the section called Worksheet 45. Here is the error in this particular lesson. If you have um, a lesson manual dated, printed dated 2020 or earlier. It says that this section is going to be using the associative property, but is actually a continued review of the distributive property um, that your child worked through using in that section called multiplying by 10. So on worksheet 45, your child is going to write the equations for 13 times 10, just like we did in our example. The solutions are listed in the lesson manual if you need to look at those. Also, take a look at the section called multiplying 50 times 4. Now, this is where you are going to introduce the associative property as a proof for annexing a zero when multiplying by a 10. So let me walk you through this one as well. So the problem we're given um, under this section is 50 times 4. Well, we know that we can multiply two numbers together to get to 50, right? 5 times 10 is equal to 50. Now, this is where we are going to use our associative property. And if you need a review on that, that was covered in lesson 24. So we ha now have 5 times 10 
times four. Now we do know with the associative property, with multiplication, it doesn't need to be in any particular order. We can mix up that order. So we are going to do that to make it a little easier to see. We're going to move the 10 to the end. So we're going to have five times four times 10. And then we're going to multiply those numbers up. 20, five times four is 20. 20 times 10 equals 200. 20 is easier to multiply by 10 than if we were to have something like 40 times five. Does that make sense? So that's why the associative property in this particular case makes this problem easier to solve. On the top of the second page, your child is going to practice that idea by multiplying the problem 20 times nine. Now the breakdown of the problem um, using the associative property is listed on the top of that page in the lesson manual. Now look at the section called annexing zeros. This is the method that I learned in school and you might have learned it as well. And it's where you see when you're multiplying a number by 10, you add a zero. That being said, you're not really adding a zero. It's called annexing a zero. So make sure you use the correct terminology. Um, there is an explanation to that um, on the right of that section. To multiply by 10, we do not add a zero. Rather, we annex a zero. Adding zero to a number does not change the number. For example, adding zero to 18 is still 18. In other words, 18 plus zero gives us 18. Uh, we need to also keep in mind that annexing only works for whole numbers. While it is valid for 54 times 10, it is not valid for 54 hundredths times 10. So make sure you keep that in your mind as you're using this terminology. The game for this lesson is called Can You Find Times Game? And it's very similar to the game Can You Find? But your child is going to pull place value cards based on the results of their multiplication problems. At the end of the game, your child will have eight place value cards left that they're not used um, at the end of um, asking all of these questions. So the eight cards that will not be used are the two, three, six, nine, 1,000, 4,000, 5,000, and 8,000. And that's all listed in your lesson manual. Your child may need to have these problems written down to figure them out. And in fact, they may need to write them out um, and calculate them out before they actually start pulling the place value cards. And that's perfectly fine. All right, from there, your child is going to complete less, uh, worksheet 45. The conclusion is simply reviewing the term annex. All right, well, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 63. The warm-up section is again another set of multi-digit subtraction problems. Continue the process as you've been doing for the last several days. Um, take a look at the section called multiplying 24 times 3. We are starting to look at multiplications slightly different, but preparing them for the traditional multiplication, multi-digit multiplication problems. Now this may be looking a little bit different for you, but we are building a foundation of understanding that your child is going to need versus simply memorizing a process or an algorithm. This section is actually helping your child to remember what multiplication can be, which is extended adding. So when we look at the problem 24 times three, we are also saying 24 is being added together three different times or 24 plus 24 plus 24. This section is also reviewing the distributive property again and using it for this particular problem. The breakdown of the problem using the distributive property is shown in the middle of the first page of the lesson. The next section is going to use repeated addition on side two of the abacus. You are gonna have your child use um, side two when they're multiplying 24 um, by three by adding 24 plus 24 plus 24 on side two of the abacus. Now let's take a look at the second page of the lesson. Here you're going to multiply on side two of the abacus. This is a method that you're using to prove a concept, not something your child's going to do to calculate ongoing multiplication problems. However, there are many people who are just curious as to how you can use um, the abacus to multiply more than one digit. So let me show you how it works because it's a little different. 
So I'm going to demonstrate how to use or how to multiply 24 times 3 on side 2 of the abacus. Side 2 is where you have the place value um, notations up on top. The first thing we need to do is prep the abacus. And we do that by sliding the beads up to about the halfway mark on the abacus. So you have a gap on the top and a gap on the bottom. Then we're going to put the 24 on the bottom of the abacus. So 24 is two tens and then four ones. Now we're ready to multiply. We're going to start with the tens. Two tens times three is six tens. So I'm going to slide these beads up. And I'm sliding these up to show that we've already done the multiplication. Now we are left with four, four ones. So four times three is 12. Well, I could move 12 beads up here, but we know that 12 is a 10 and a two, right? So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to move up one of the 10 beads and two of the one beads. And we're going to slide these beads up to show that we've already completed the multiplication. So 24 times three is 72. Once you work through that problem, your child is going to work through the problems, the rest of the problems on worksheet 46. The very next problem on the worksheet is 32 times four. And in the lesson manual, you will see, um, walk you through how to use the abacus for that particular problem. Let me walk you through it just one more time to make sure you understand how it works. The next problem on the worksheet is 32 times four. So I'm going to put on the bottom what I'm multiplying. 32, so here's three tens and two times four. So 30 times four is 120. So I'm going to put 120 up at the top, 120. And because I multiplied those, I'm gonna slide those beads up. Now I'm left with two times four. Two times four is eight. So I'm going to slide these beads up and put eight on the top. So my final answer for 32 times four is 128. Then your child is going to complete the remaining problems on worksheet 46. Make sure you have your child use whichever method of solving the problem that they are most comfortable using. If it's the distributive property or using the abacus, or if you have an advanced student that, do not, that is able to calculate these on their own, that's fine too. The math card game listed for today is Building Race Game, which is A71 in the Math Card Games book. Now, this is a more challenging version of the sums building game that you've played previously. In addition to this particular game, you may also want to play a multiplication math card game, especially if your child is struggling or still learning those multiplication math facts. All right, well, let's turn to lesson 64. The warm-up section is, again, going to work on multi-digit um, subtraction math fact problems. Um, continue the same processes that you have done in those previous days. The next section is a birthday problem. And this is taking a sort of a word problem and using it to work on multiplication. And you're going to use this problem and variations of it throughout the entire lesson. So the problem is this. H ask, how many days old is a person on their ninth birthday. Well, before we get started on solving this problem, I just want to guide you through to the explanation section listed to the right. Having the child write out all of the steps for multi-digit multiplication helps her understand the process in preparation for the traditional algorithm, which is going to be taught in full next year. So back to the problem for the day. We're going to break down that problem into segments. So our problem is actually going to be 365 times nine. Well, how many days are there in a year? 365. How many years old is the person? Nine. So that's where we get our problem, 365 times nine. Now your child is going to break up the problem 365 times nine into three segments, the 300 times nine, 
60 times nine, and five times nine. And then you're going to work out the, each of those problems on side two of the abacus. Make sure your child documents each layer of the problem. That is going to be the foundation for multi-digit multiplication, you know, where we're saying drop our zero or put our placeholder in there. So let me show you how this is going to work. We are going to solve the birthday problem very similarly to how we solved um, the problem, the multiplication problems in lesson 64 on side two of the abacus. The first step is, of course, to put all of the beads in the center of the abacus, and then we're going to put in the 365 on the bottom of the abacus. So here's 365. Now we need to multiply 365 by nine. And we're gonna start on the ones place. So five times nine is 45. So we're gonna go ahead and put 45 up on the abacus. Once we have 45 shown on the top of the abacus, then we're going to go to our paper and we're going to write 45 right underneath our line of 365 times nine. Go ahead and take a look at the lesson manual to see what that will look like. Now we're ready to multiply the six times nine, or six tens times nine. So six tens times nine, or six times nine is 54, so six tens times nine is 540. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to slide these up and we're going to put in 540. Once we have those beads moved, we're going to write 540 on the line underneath 45. Finally, we need to multiply 300 times 9. Well, we know 3 times 9 is 27, so 300 times 9 is 2700 or 2,700. So we're going to slide that amount up. 2,700. Once we finish with that, we are going to write 2,700 or 2,700 on the next line under the, underneath the line 540. Now your child may already see that they need to trade. If so, great job. They already are knowing what they're needing to do. So the next step they are going to want to do is add up all of these numbers, which on the abacus you've pretty much already done, except you need to trade these. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to trade these 10 beads for one 1,000 bead. And our final answer is 3,285. Looking at the top of the second page of the lesson, your child has already calculated each total based on their place value. So 300, in time, 300 times 9, 60 times 9, 5 times 9, they already had those solutions. Now your child needs to know what to do with those solutions. So you're going to ask your child, what do you do to get the final product? What do you do to these numbers to get to the final product? And your child is going to need to add those numbers together. The middle of the second page, you're going to ask your child, what does this answer mean? <laughs> well, you might need to go back and review what the actual problem itself says and remind your child what it is that they're working on. Sometimes when my kids got so busy solving the problem that by the time they get to this point of, of the problem, they've forgotten what the original problem was. So you might wanna go back and read the initial problem before you ask them the question, what does this answer mean? Just to keep it all in context. If you have an advanced student, by the way, you may want to look at the explanation section on the, so on the right, which says this. If desired, discuss that leap years will actually add two or three days to the total. And you may want to go through that activity with your child, add those extra days into their answer. Now, the final question to the problem is, what is the number rounded to the nearest thousand? So your child has already come up with their solution, which was 3,285. That's the solution to multiplying 365 times nine, 3,285. Then they are to round that number to the nearest thousand. Now, if your child does not remember how to round, go ahead and review lessons 44, 45, and 46 to remind them on how to review. 
From there, your child is going to complete worksheet 47. Have them work through those problems, but don't grade those answers or even check them. Um, they're gonna be checked in the next lesson. Also, for these problems, if your child needs to use the abacus just as they did throughout the lesson, go ahead and let them do so. However, if your child doesn't need the abacus, great, let them solve those problems without using it. Now the math card game suggested for this lesson is again, the building race game, A71. If your child is still struggling with multiplication, you will also want to add a multiplication math card game as well. Well, that's it for the week. If you have any questions concerning a lesson or if your child is struggling with something, give us a call or email us. We are here to help. I look forward to seeing you next week as we cover lessons 65 through 68. Have a great week, everybody.